listen, we are so close to Rappa actually gracing us with her presence, or at least I would say as graceful as it could be because she is a ninja. However, there are some things I want to talk about with the Rappa banner that I think need to be addressed. And I know that people are not going to be happy because of the fact that I'm not overtly positive about Rappa, but I do have some things good to say about her. So before we get into that, Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to this video. Don't forget to check out Gamer Subs using code Tyson for 10% off. Y'all, I'm just saying, we just got Crusader Raid in uh, collaboration with Swagger Souls. And I got to tell you that uh, the mango brisk tea taste of this one is so freaking good. Gamer Subs is so good about replicating the flavors that you love without the sugar. So I'm just saying, use code Tyson for 10% off. Get yourself some Gamer Subs, right? Ah, all right. Not any further delay, you know, let's go ahead and dive into the wrap up banner. Now, as you can see, I'm on Pridewin. I think Pridewin's a really, really good site. I know a lot of people, uh, well, I don't know about a lot of people, but I know that some creators are scared to talk about Pridewin. I don't exactly know why. I kind of do, but I, you know, it's whatever. I march to the beat of my own drum. I don't care. Um, but I want to first talk about some of the four stars that we got going on here because again when I do these should you summons It's about the bang for your buck. I know that some people get all like Taistra, um, if we like the character we should just summon absolutely if you like the character if you think they're great summon for them But if you're looking for your overall characters to be better in general It's good to actually look at the options that you have. So let's go ahead and dive in First things first, let's talk about Yukog. Now, I have a personal space in my heart for Yukong. I love Yukong. I think she's wonderful. Her aesthetic is great. Her character design is just fantastic. The way that she's engraved in the story. And I can't wait to see what happens in 2.7 when we get, you know, we get Ting Yun back, you know, because God forbid I need me some, you know, Ting Yun in my life. Um, but I will say that Yukong is just overall okay now if we look at like the tier list right and i know that people get mad when i look at the tier list but you do have to take into consideration the tier list here right it's important it is actually important to look at these tier lists so if we go and try to find yukong right yukong is going to be down here i think this is for memory of chaos right she's not exactly the best harmony user out there right especially with how many harmony units we have if we look at pure fiction it's about the same. She's near the bottom of the barrel, right? If we look at Apocalyptic Shadow, it's about the same. She's near the bottom of the barrel, right? So, why are we even considering Yukong? Well, I think that Yukong does have some usability in some sense. She does give your team, like, decent boosts. Like, not, not significant, but in the early game, it's not too bad. Uh, you got your ultimate right here, Diving Kestrel. If Roaring Bowstrings is active on Yukong, when her ultimate is used, additionally increases all allies' crit rate by 28% and crit damage by 65%. At the same time, deals imaginary damage. So, the crit rate crit damage boost is really, really good. However, with so many different units in the Harmony Spectrum, like Ron May, like Robin, like Ting Yun, for example, regular Ting Yun, I think that Yukong was sadly dead on arrival. And for me, I was a big proprietor in the beginning of saying Yukong is great, she's fantastic. And I still think she has some uses, but not, not as many, right? Like if we look even at some of the har Harmony characters that we have, right? Let's go, boom. You know, we're gonna go into, where's Harmony at? I'm so dumb, there we go, Harmony, right? So. Already, we could look at some discrepancies here, right? Bronya being amazing at the start. Like, she is a five-star. Yes, you have to be able to summon for her. But she outclasses Ting Yun in a lot of different areas. You have... Or not Ting Yun, but uh, Yukong. Speaking of Ting Yun right there, boom. Ting Yun outclassing Yukong. Ron Mei, Robin, all outclassing Yukong. Hell, even Hanya in her own right outclasses her. I think the only one that doesn't entirely beat her for me is Asta, and that's just me, right? But unfortunately, I can't say that Yukong is, is someone you should go for, right? So Yukong is gonna get a thumbs down, unfortunately. She is hot though. So if you like hot foxy and women, yes, go for her. Because God knows I love my hot foxy and women, baby. 
you know. So let's go ahead and dive in now into Shui Yi. Now, Shui Yi has actually surprised me a little bit. I think that Shui Yi is actually really good as a destruction quantum force art, right? I don't use her that often, but when I do, like in the events and stuff, she's actually not that bad, especially as a four star unit. And I think that, you know, a lot of four stars get overlooked by the five stars, especially with these banners or with this set of banners in phase one of 2.6, having imbibed or Lune. Um, I think that's way he actually is the shining star of the four stars, in my personal opinion. Now, it wait, oh, wrong thing. We're not going to look at that just yet. Trust me on that. We'll get there. Um, but if we look at the tier list, right? And again, I use the tier list just as an example. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, 100% right. We're looking at Memory of Chaos. Pridewind puts them at T2, which is pretty dang good comparatively to Yukong. You got Pure Fiction here. If we're looking down at tier three, a little bit lower, but Pure Fiction is mainly for the Erudition units, followed by Apocalyptic Shadow, tier 1.5. So she's decent. She's very decent for what she's able to do. We go down here and we're talking about, you know, her ultimate, uh, Quantum damage equal to 250% of Zhui Yi's attack to a single target ally. The attack ignores weakness types and reduces enemy's toughness. When the enemy's toughness is broken, the quantum weakness break effect is triggered. In this attack, the more toughness is reduced, the higher the damage will be dealt. So she's really good at being able to damage that, to do that damage. We go into her talent here, the Karmic Perpetuation. When Zhui Yi reduces enemy toughness with attacks, Karma will be stacked. The more toughness is reduced, the more stacks of Karma will be added up to eight stacks. So basically, anytime that you're reducing toughness, you're just getting a stack. Pretty dang cool. Uh, when Zhui Yi's uh, allies reduce enemy toughness with attacks, she also gains a stack of Karma. When Karma reaches the max number of stacks, consumes all current Ooh. Karma stacks and immediately launches a follow-up attack against an enemy target dealing damage for three times and with each time dealing quantum damage equal to 90 percent of joyee's attack to a single random enemy so she's very very good at being able to do follow-up attacks she's kind of like a destruction character and a hunt character in the same at the same time also um she dies a lot in the game basically just so you know not not just like in the team like just in general storyline wise sorry spoilers if you haven't done so yet but joyee does die a lot it's crazy, but she's a robot, so it's cool. You don't have to worry about her. So Zhui Yi, honestly, for me, gets an up. I think that she's a great character to have amongst your arsenal right now, especially in the state of the game right now. You know, I don't think Rappa is going to be changing a lot of things. So having the game kind of stay where it's at with Zhui Yi is really good because I don't want Zhui Yi to get down, uh, crept up, right? Now let's go ahead and talk about Lynx. I think Lynx is one of the better healers in the game, right? If we look at, you know, say just healers, right? We look at Abundance. We're looking at our healers. We got the Gallagher and, uh, you know, Lynxia. I don't know why I threw, threw that. But she's actually the be best four-star outside of Gallagher. And there's only three four-stars, yes. But if you really think about it, if we're looking at a compar like a comparative, right? If we're looking at the top scale, you know, you have your Huo Woes, you got your Luochas, you got your Gallaghers, right? She's not that far behind. Honestly, I would say, you know, for me at least, Huo Huo or Huan Hue is near the top up there, followed by Gallagher Lingsha. Actually, I think Luocha is up there too. So it's kind of tough to choose between the, the four because they're all different teams, except for, you know, Gallagher and Lingsha being really the same. Um, but then you have your final three, and I think Lynx is the next one. So she's right in the middle, right? So let's take a look at where she's at in regards to the tier list in each one of these sections. So Apocalyptic Shadow, she's tier three, which is not bad. It's definitely not bad. If we look at the pure fiction side, right? She's tier two. Again, not bad. Memory of Chaos, tier 1.5. Not bad, right? And she's, like I said, a very decent healer. We take a look at, you know, her skill here, applies survival response in a single target and increases their max HP by 7.5% of Lynx's max HP plus 200. If the target ally is a character of the path of destruction or uh, preservation, the chance of them being attacked by enemies will greatly increase. Survival response lasts for two turns. So that's kind of a blessing and a curse. I think that's a blessing for preservation, but a curse for destruction characters, right? So she works really, really well with that. Uh, restores the target HP by 12% of uh, Lynx's match HP plus 
320. Go to our ultimate, you dispel one debuff from all allies and immediately restores their respective HP by the amount equal to 13.5% of Lynx's max HP plus 360, right? So she's good. She's actually really, really good. And I think that when it comes to like the tier list of healers, it's tough, right? It's a very tough life. I honestly, I'm kind of like, man, Loach should be up there, but he is meta. And so is Lynx. And that's what's good. Like she is technically considered meta. So to me, Lynx is enough. Lynx is good. So already the four stars are really, really good. Now, let's talk about Imbibitor Lune Don Hung. Now I know that we need to talk about Rappa, but I think we need to talk about Imbibitor Lune and how he coincides with being better than Rappa or worse than Rappa, right? So first things first, we go to the tier list here, right? Again. I know that people throw a, a fit about it, but it is what it is, right? So we talk about Imbibitor Luna. He's tier one with Clara and uh, Jing Liu. By the way, side note, the fact that Clara is still tier one in Memory of Chaos is fantastic, right? We go to Pure Fiction, right? Pure Fiction, he's gonna be lower because Pure Fiction doesn't entirely work with him. You know, so kind of sad to see him down there, but it is what it is. Ooh. We go to Apocalyptic Shadow, right? And he goes right back up to 1.5 alongside Jing Liu, right? But he's also alongside Zhui Yi. But Zhui Yi's more, you know, obviously break. And he's more, you know, just doing damage. He does a lot of damage in my opinion. Like, from what I've seen, I still think he's really, really good. I still think that he's top tier. Obviously, he's classified as meta. What happens is when you use his skill, you could either pop the skill one, two, or three times. When you do that, you do more damage to the enemy. It does different animations. When you do your burst, or not burst, but ultimate. When you do your ultimate, you gain three charges, or I think it's two. Two charges, I think. Let me double check. Uh, where's the ultimate attack? Ultimate, you gain... Oh, no. It's possible to hold up to three. Or no, you get two. You get two of the uh, Squama... Sa Sacrosancta Sacrosancta There we go It was like Sarscaramouche um, But you get two of the uh, Squama Right Which is good Because those Take place Of using your SP Right So he does use a lot Of your actual like Skill points But if you pair him up With somebody like a Sparkle He works really really well In a team with her So To me He's a thumbs up I think that he's really, really good. And at least at the beginning of the game, when you're starting to get into the game, and Biber Luna is definitely worth it. Now, are we going to sit here and say that other destruction units aren't better? Well, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. You know, you have Yoon Lee who came out of nowhere. I think that she's freaking crazy. Firefly is really, really good as a destruction unit, but I think that she, it's dependent on teams and she's more beneficial, obviously with a break team because she deals with super break, right? But yeah, you see all these different destruction type units, right? Destruction just kills. Like you have Blade, you have Clara, you have Jing Liu, you know, Zhui Yi, of course. And when you think of all these destruction characters, it's really crazy to think that a lot of people still like look at him by Lune and just go, man, he's good. And he is good. I think that he is good. So to me, he does get a thumbs up. Do I think that... He's going to be a must summon over phase two. We'll get into that here in just a second, right? Let me go ahead and take a swig of water real quick. Mm. Now, let's get into Rappa. Can we just say the air edition is like one of the worst uh, paths in the game? I'm just saying. That's that's my opinion. I think that air edition is just horrible. So for me, whenever I see a new air edition character, I don't get hype. And you know what? When we talk about Erudition, right? We talk about, you know, all these characters. And obviously, as you can see, we're not going to see... <laughs> we're not going to see Rappa in the tier list, right? So this is purely off of speculation now. We have Argenti, who is considered the best Erudition unit in the game, right? We look across the board, right? Like, normally he's up there, but wow. Okay, so Kimiko, Jing Yuan, and Quinky up there pure fiction he's at the top but he's also near the top there so when i think of erudition units i think that they got to be better than argenti right so let's go ahead and look into what he does right so he has or what rappa does right so rappa has an enhanced skill uh basically what i think you get this from go or enhance attack 
I think you get this from your ultimate, right? So let's see. Uh, launches Ningu Dragon Bane Petal Blade. The first two hits deal imaginary damage equal to 100% of Rappa's attack to one designated enemy. And imaginary damage equal to 50% of Rappa's attack to adjacent enemies. And then the third hit deals imaginary damage equal to 100% of Rappa's attack to all enemies. Nan's basic attack will not recover skill points. Attacking enemies that don't have weakness uh, to imaginary can still reduce toughness whose effect is equal to 50% of the original toughness reduction. When breaking weakness triggers the imaginary weakness break effect, right? So yeah, and then you enter the seal form state from the ultimate, immediately gains one extra turn, obtains three points of chroma ink, and increases weakness break efficiency by 50% and break effect by 30%. While in the seal form state, basic attack is enhanced and skill and ultimate cannot be used. After using enhanced basic attack, consumes one point of chroma ink. When chroma ink is depleted, exits the seal form state. So that's how you get there. You have to use your ultimate. For the skill, you just deal imaginary damage equal to 120% of rapid attack to all enemies. I think that's very bland for a skill, which is kind of crazy. Um, we go into the talent here. Each time the enemy target is weakness broken rapa gains one point of charge up to a maximum of 10 points of charge when rapa next launches the third hit of ningu uh demon blade pedal demon bane pedal blade additionally deals break damage equal to 60 percent of rapa's imaginary break damage to all enemies this damage can ignore weakness type to reduce to toughness consuming all charge basically she's going to be working towards like breaking enemy weakness gaining those seal uh uh seal dragon bane pedal blade demon blade whatever the frick it's called right so to me basically what you're doing is you're using skill to get your ultimate ultimate to use enhanced basic attacks deplete those go into skill ultimate and you're just kind of going in that triangle right pretty pretty self-explanatory right now if i look at this and i'm seeing you know tier list for pure fiction because let's face it that's that's erudition's bread and butter right there's only three characters that don't hit that mold right of being amazing and you got jade himiko heard of being a four star and you have argenti right am i gonna see rappa in the apex characters tier list probably i think that rappa will still be up there but i'm trying to think of this as like is this worth it is it worth it to go for them and the answer to me is no i don't think rappa is worth it i think that if you look at rappa and you look at the differences between her and an argenti and what they're able to bring to the table i don't think that rappa is going to outperform argenti however i will say that the animations that she has are really freaking good like I will be somebody for her, but if I'm looking at this from new player's perspective, like I, I take into consideration, right? My roommates, two of my roommates just started Honkai Star Rail. If I were to go upstairs now and I say, hey, 2.6 has Rappa and Imbibitor Lune coming up. I'm going to tell them skip. And it's not because like the four stars aren't good because we have Zhui Yi and Lynx. The only one that's bad is Yu Kong. Yukong's the only bad one in my personal opinion. And that that hurts me to say because I think she's hot. And Imbibitor Lune is not bad. And Rappa's okay. So why would I say to skip this banner? Well, we have Akron coming in phase two. And we have Argenti. Two, like, completely meta units in my personal opinion. Well, I mean, in a lot of people's opinions too. So if we look at these tier lists again, we see, boom, Akron right there at the top for Memory of Chaos, right? Where's Argenti? Boom, at the top for Memory of Chaos, right? We go to Pure Fiction. Boom, she's in tier list 0.5, right? So she's not the best, but she's up there, right? You look at Argenti. Boom, he's up there as one of the best, right? You look at Apocalyptic Shadow. Boom, Akron is right there. When look at this. Boom, Argenti is up there. It is a no-brainer to skip Rappa and Imbibitor Lune. It's just a no-brainer. And and I, 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 I wait... For the people in the comments to be like, how dare you say that Rappa is a skip and all this stuff. I'm just saying what everybody needs to hear. It's the truth that Rappa is a skip. 
And it, it's, again, I get labeled as the negative Nancy. I get labeled as the negative Nancy, but I'm going to be honest. If you are a brand new player and you just saw these banners, what would you go for? I'd go for Akron. <laughs> I'd go for Akron because it's not even close, right? It's not even close. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out Gamer Subs down below. Um, yeah, skip, skip wrap up. That's all I'm going to say, but that's going to be it. Love you to death. And as always, we'll catch you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.